Hello and welcome back to another review of me Kevin from Kevin Grant on Whiskey. This week I've got an independent bottling from Murray McDavid and it's a Tullibardin four year old. So this is something, <clears throat> I've not had much Tullibardin because it's always been kind of 43%, quite light, I've never found a real lot of it going on. So for my birthday I'd seen this and I thought oh, okay, I'll put that in my wee birthday list and see if anyone will pick it up for me and I, it got picked up for me so I'm quite glad to try something a little bit higher ABV um, and, and a PX cask as well. So this is a four year old so it's young, distilled in 2016, bought in 2020, first fill PX cask as well. So you can tell by the colour, this is four years old, look at the colour of it straight away for being so young. 46% ABV, and this is part of their benchmark uh, range. So I've had this in the glass sitting for a little bit just now, but I thought I would go through who are Murray McDavid, what's Tullibardin, and try and give a little bit of insight to, to where it came from. So Murray McDavid was founded in 1996 by Mark Rayner, or Reiner, Rayner, maybe a bit more famously known for uh, revitalising Brooklady Distillery, so he done that in 2000. So 1996 he takes over um, with a couple of friends, I think it was, and then goes to 2000 and he also um, takes on Brooklady Distillery and, and really gets that going. So we, we kind of look at how much of an impact he's had in the whiskey industry, and this is a massive, massive start for him. But in the year 2000, when this happens, this gets, uh, well, sorry, 1996, this gets taken over. I've got here in 2013, Murray McDavid was taken over by ACO. And then a year later, they were able to take over Colburn um, Distillery. So Colburn Distillery, Distillery is a closed distillery. It's been dismantled, but everything stayed there. It was mothballed in 1985. So everything sat there. But because they've been an independent bottler, they never had warehouses, they never had anywhere to put all the stock that they wanted. So they were able to take over so the Azio old product, Colburn, Speyside, and take everything over there as a big storage unit for them. So they have all these casks, their own casks, private casks, people that buy casks, and they leave them there. So Colburn Distillery, what I was able to find out was it was made for experimental um, techniques and also like techniques on maybe changing how they produce whiskey around the other Diageo plants. So it was more, the way I kind of see it is maybe it's more of a training centre. So when when it was up for sale or someone came in and says, can you take your I don't think there was much, um, there was much to it. You know, they, it wasn't one of their babies that they wanted to hold on, like say Lagavulin or, um, something else you know like if open for instance they wanted to say okay yeah come and take it they've got the grounds so this is where Murray McDavid keep all their liquid and this is where they bottle and everything from so we're looking at a vast vast amount of whiskey they can they can store in there so now we move on to Tullibarden this is a whiskey that we've got as I said I've tried some of the range but the Burgundy a Sauternes and a Sovereign which is a um, full kind of bourbon maturation, all 43%. And if I remember correctly, there's nothing on there to say non chill filtered natural colour, but I do believe that it is natural colour. This here, though, is non chill filtered, not coloured, is what it says on it. So get it on the nose. It's PX, first fill PX. I'm expecting big raisins and sweet kind of whiskey. As you can see, I've had some out already. I've shared some of this as well. So I kind of know what I'm coming into, but I've not really sat back and tried to break it down and really taste. I just know it's got a super, it's very sweet. But let's try it just now. Let's get into it and see what other kind of facts we can find. For four years old, there is nothing, there's nothing like spirity to it. Don't get that kind of new make or anything. I find with a lot of young whiskey, I can find some new make or very oaty or just it's just got a very distinctive taste for being very very young but on the nose it is just px it is very sweet raisin as it's just a lot a lot of raisin going on there i 
don't want to see. I would say maybe. Kind of chocolatey, like a cappuccino chocolate on top. It's got that slight milky chocolate note to it as well. Raisins, kind of sultanas. 46% is, is still, it's very, very lively. I think for being young that the cask has had such an interaction with the liquid that you can still tell that that spirit is trying to break through. So when you do smell the 46%, it does smell like that. I would maybe even say on the nose it smells a little bit higher just for being so young and just in, in spirit led. But the cask just completely brings it down. Yeah, so kind of milky coffee, milky chocolate coffee, raisins, sultanas. And maybe like kind of vanilla custard as well, something along those lines. Right, let's try this on the palate and see what we get. Slender, right? Sweet, you taste kind of it's thick. You need to kind of draw your cheeks in after to get everything from it. It doesn't just flow down; it sticks about, and it still has that kind of chocolatey coffee note to it. A very light coffee though, not like a, an espresso. It's a very light, more milky chocolate coffee. Something like that is what I'm definitely leading from. Maybe a little bit of fudge, toffee, something, something like that. All the kind of sweet things, the kind of, your, like, anything but brown and sweet, fudges, caramels, toffees, uh, caramel sauce, something along those lines. The good th it does tell you a lot on the bottle, for sure. Tells us four-year-old, Tullibard and Distilled, 2016, Highland. Started a bourbon, finished a first mill PX. I'm going to say it started, it's been in bourbon for three years, just when it's been legally called uh, whiskey, and then maybe a year in PX. And the colour is... I would imagine if this was six years old in the first fill PX, it would probably be like... It'd look like a Guinness, so it'd be that dark. We turn... It tells us all the cast details as well, which is really good for the kind of geek side of it. And on the back, it is one of... 1,338 bottles. I've also just seen here that there is tasting notes, which I don't like to look at. Um, I'll just cover that up just now. But it just gives us a little bit of information about... So it's saying for its final 16 months maturing in first fill PX sherry casks. So there we go. So it's had 16 months in PX. I thought it was maybe less, but what do I know, right? So it's got enough information on there for sure. A lot of information... This came out when I seen it, um, it was, I think, £37, and I still think it is available on some online shops, especially in the UK. I did have a wee look again. But £37 for a first fill PX, four-year-old Highland whiskey, aged in Speyside, with PX casks from Spain. Yeah, I can't get that Raisin Sultana's chocolate milky coffee. Um, that's my main notes from it. This, does for me, does not need any water whatsoever. It's For me, I think, if anything, it would need less interaction with PX. It's just that sweet. It's a definite one dram, and this has, has to go away for how sweet it is. If you have a sweet tooth and you love sweet whiskey, it's very, very easily drank, I would say. So if you've got a sweet tooth, you could probably go back to this easily because it is enjoyable for sure. But overpoweringly with, with sweetness. But it's a complete change from what I remember Tullibarden to be from the distillery itself. Because Tullibarden distillery 
is relatively new. I think it was 1949, 1959. One of the two is when it was more or less really founded, right beside Glen Eagles. So if you're driving up the motorway from Glasgow and you wanted to go to Perth, for instance, or you wanted to go to Speyside from Glasgow, you will have to drive by Tullabard and the Stirling. You've got no choice, really. The motorway just continues on. It's on your left-hand side. You could stop off the quickest stop off ever. And right next door to Tullabard and the Stirling is the Highland Spring water uh, source as well. Well, that's all bottled. So depending if I do the math, I suspect that's where all the water source is coming from as well, which is some of the purest in Scotland. Right, let's go back in for a wee drink. This has good legs. For sure, very sticky. I think maybe I don't know if you'll catch it. Maybe get a little bit, a wee tinge of kind of wood note coming through there just at the back of it just trying to come through maybe if it sits a little bit longer maybe the further I get down the bottle it might have that more wood influence and just not full px i do like a px whiskey there's no doubt about it i just think this is very strong on the px but for 37 pounds i would buy another one if this goes i think it's good to if people come round and are not too sure oh that and you, you give them a whiskey oh that's a bit i'm not feeling it this is probably one most people would like because it's sweet, it's easy, it's not what whiskey is when you compare it to other PXs for sure. But I've enjoyed it, I'll continue to enjoy it, I will buy another bottle if this gets finished in the near future and there's still some around, especially for that price. But if we look at this, it's given me tasty notes of roasted coffee, rum, raisin, vanilla, rich malt, fudge, dried fruit, sweet oak creamy malt there's some things i definitely get in there but there's some that um i don't but i like it not love it but i like it but i'll sit back i'll enjoy this sweet sweet dram um and get my relaxing head on now get to relax it's been a long week of work obviously been two weeks uh, off really with the whiskey um so I'm going to get back and sit and relax and enjoy this because I'm off tomorrow as well. So if you like this as well, obviously everything that I do, I'll be as honest as I can. Um, so if you liked it, hit the like button, leave me some comments, hit subscribe if you've not done so already and follow on socials. I, um, I'm trying to be more proactive on the socials if I can be. It's just as I say, with work it's very difficult to try and find time to get really good uh, pictures and content. But I'll do my best. I'll do my best. But thank you everyone for supporting me along this journey. Well, everyone, as always, I've been Kevin from Kevin Rental Whiskey. Join me next week. Let's talk whiskey. Thanks.